sometimes your calorimetry question is going to be one where the container uh, that you're using can't be styrofoam. <laughs> For instance, if you're burning something and you want to know how much heat is derived from that, that chemical or that substance that you're burning, sometimes it, my students actually do a lab where we burn food and we want to know what the caloric uh, content or the, the energy content is of a certain food, uh, we burn that food. Well, you can't burn that food and then put it into a calorimeter water, pss, it'll go out. And you can't take that food and burn it and have it uh, underneath a calorimeter of styrofoam because it'll just melt a hole in it and psh, all the water comes out. The deal is you might have a can that you're going to use as the substance which is going to hold water and a temperature change is going to be recorded. Well, if that's the case, you're going to have to take into account that container in your calculation as well. So, we look at this question. You got 70 grams of water and it's heated from 26 to 34 degrees Celsius in a 10.0 gram can, aluminum can. From the combustion of what mass of methane? Oh my goodness, so here's the thing. Draw a picture, draw a picture. I got an aluminum, bad picture, I know. Aluminum can here with a thermometer in it. I know it looks like a ladder, whatever. You got a thermometer in an aluminum can, you got some water in there, you got your 70.0 grams of water in here, here's your 10.6 gram aluminum can. I'm burning some methane, and it's heating up this right here, and I want to heat up this water from 26 to 34, so then, if that's the case, how many moles, and then how many grams of that methane actually underwent combustion? Okay, so how do you set up a question like that? Ah, so, you break it down, you break it down. Heat loss equals heat gain. Who's losing the heat? The methane that's undergoing combustion is losing the heat. So it's the methane. Now look, it's not just, it's not, it's methane undergoing combustion, okay? That's CH4 plus O2 makes CO2 plus H2, H2O. That's what's going on. So the methane is losing heat. To what? To the water, which is gaining the heat. So water is gaining the heat, but you know what? Plus. Because there's something else gaining the heat that we have to take into consideration that we could find a specific heat capacity for, and that's the aluminum can. So that's going to be heat lost by the methane undergoing combustion equals heat gained by the water and the heat gained by the aluminum can. So how would we write that formula? Well, actually, the heat gained by the water is mc delta t plus the heat gained by the aluminum. Is the aluminum undergoing a temperature change? Well, I hope so. I hope it's not undergoing a phase change and it's melting or something like that. So here's the thing. It's undergoing a temperature change. Well, what's the initial temperature going to be? The initial temperature of the water. What's the final temperature going to be? The final temperature of the water. Why? Because you probably started off with an aluminum can and you, you, you put the water in there and you took the initial temperature and everything was at thermal equilibrium at that time. Right. So uh, the deal is that we're going to have the same initial and final temperature for the aluminum as well as the water. Uh, and since the water aluminum is undergoing a temperature change, it's also an mc delta t. That's the calculation. But what's this over here? The methane is undergoing combustion. That's a chemical change. Remember what I told you the chemical change formula is? NH equals Q, or heat. Where H, big H, is, well, if the N stands for moles, number of moles, then big H stands for a certain amount of heat per mole. Because this right here will give you joules, this will give you joules, this better give you joules, or kilojoules, which it will. I've given you that heat of combustion of methane. That big H, that heat of combustion is 805. Uh, it's probably 805 point something or 802 something. Anyway, we're just going to use that. That's the heat of combustion. And by the way, it's not a positive number. It's a negative number because the big H for that is a molar heat, and a molar heat has to be described as either exothermic or endothermic. What's going on with this thing? Is it losing heat or gaining heat? So a big H, or a molar heat number, has to have a positive in front or a negative in front. In this case, it's an exothermic reaction because methane, when it burns, releases heat, right? So that's negative 805 kilojoules per mole. We're going to drop the negative in the calculation because it doesn't make sense to keep it, you'll see. But for right now, we know that that's exothermic. Okay, so what are we going to do? We're going to plug numbers into here and solve for that, which then will help us to get the mass. Here it comes. 